Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me for another art video. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing the process for a watercolor still life painting that I created last week. And I'm also going to be talking about the ever so popular topic of finding one's own artistic style and voice. But more specifically, I'm going to be talking about an aspect that lots of more advanced artists out there that are offering tips to beginners in regards to helping them find their artistic style rarely, if ever, talk about. And I really feel that by understanding this concept and applying some of the tips that I'm going to be sharing later on, not only are beginners going to be able to find their artistic style and voice a lot sooner, but by doing this, it's also going to ensure that the work that you create throughout your artistic journey is going to be meaningful and original, true to yourself. All right, you guys, and before getting into the topic, I just want to extend a huge welcome to all you new people just visiting my channel for the very first time. Consider subscribing because every single Friday I share a new video with art tips, drawing and painting tutorials, and encouragement for aspiring artists. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to click on that little notification bell so that YouTube can let you know whenever I publish a new video. Otherwise, you may or may not find out about it. And I also want to send out a huge thank you to the people that have joined my brand new membership site over on Patreon. Do consider joining because over there I offer real-time drawing and painting tutorials, each with its downloadable outline drawing, supply list which includes specific paint colors, and high resolution reference photo, live classes on art fundamentals and monthly creative assignments, direct feedback from me, access to a growing vault of original art reference photos taken by myself, weekly sketchbook prompts that help you stay consistent and progressing your art skills, and much, much more. I'm gonna be leaving a link to my Patreon site down below in the description box in case you wanna go and check it out. Let's get into the topic. All right, so a lot of beginner artists kind of get frustrated or a little bit disappointed when they ask someone who is a little bit more advanced in their journey what they can do to find their own artistic style and voice. And the more advanced artist isn't able to provide specific steps or a specific formula. And they basically just get told to do the work and it's gonna come organically. And while it's certainly true that you have to keep putting in the work and this process of discovering your artistic style and voice is gonna happen naturally, it's not really something that you can push or force. There's this specific aspect in the artistic journey that those people who have been able to develop a very distinctive look and feel to their work have gone through and give importance to whether they're conscious of it or not. And this is the process of peeling back those layers and discovering themselves as human beings through introspection and self-analysis as they continue developing their cold artistic skills. You see, an artwork is made out of both objective and subjective aspects. And a lot of people out there go on and on talking about the objective aspects or the specific visual characteristics that we're able to perceive in a work, but they rarely talk about the subjective aspects of a piece and how important it is for a person to find himself or herself throughout this artistic journey so that our artwork can finally transmit who we are and have ourselves in it. In many ways, your artistic style is already within you, but you have to listen. And you also have to have the technical knowledge and skills to be able to see that vision through. Most of us are already aware of the objective aspects that make up an art style. The objective aspects that make up an art style are, for example, the selection of drawing and or painting mediums that the artist on hand uses, the specific techniques or ways in which those mediums are used, including the format and the substrate that they're used on, the type of subject or subjects that the artist on hand likes to draw or paint, whether it's a portrait, scenery or landscapes or still life or animals, etc. The specific degree of abstraction to realism that the artist on hand creates and the overall use or manipulation of the elements and principles of art. And it's very, very useful to analyze other artists' work that you are called to in order to pinpoint the specific visual cues or characteristics that you like and would like to incorporate into your own work. And I even share a very useful exercise in a blog post that I created a while back, and I'm going to make sure to leave a link to that below so you can check it out. 
But there's a lot more to it than that. You have to ask yourself why you are drawn to those specific characteristics. And you're going to get a lot more from that kind of exercise and get to know yourself more with that kind of exercise if you actually collect characteristics that you like from a variety of artists' work in order to combine them into your own original piece. But anyway, there are also subjective aspects to an artwork. So it's overall mood or the general idea or message behind the piece, what it's trying to communicate. And the overall idea or message doesn't have to be anything monumental or dramatic or grandiose or epic or anything like that. It can be something simple, but it does have to come from the heart. It has to be original to you. There has to be a reason that you're doing it and you have to be able to see some part of yourself in whatever it is you're doing. And there's really no way that you're going to be able to create something original and meaningful if you don't know yourself first, if you don't know what is important to you, what you like, what you don't like, the message that you want to put out into the world and how you want to do this, your quirks and what makes you different from other people, etc. And I can totally get how difficult it can be to sit down and listen to your own thoughts when you're constantly distracted by the work of other amazingly talented artists and you're constantly bombarded with all of this visual stimuli, but it's incredibly important for you to take a moment and step back and disconnect yourself from all of this. And I'm going to be talking about this in a bit. I 100% believe that both objective and subjective aspects are just as important in the creation of an original art piece. And this is why I really feel that beginners starting out should give importance and time to self-analysis and introspection once they have learned the basics on art fundamentals and have already learned basic techniques in regards to their medium of choice. And even though I may end up shooting myself in the foot because I create and share tips and tutorials videos, I highly, highly recommend artists step away from social media and step away from the computer and tutorials created by other artists and limit your consumption. Spend time with yourself getting to know yourself, explore the materials that you are personally called to, and make time to digest all of the stimuli, whether it be visual or whether it be music or literature or any kind of artwork or design that you are personally called to, digest it for yourself and make something out of all of these things and your past experiences and things you have been influenced by to create your own thing. Because that process is what is going to finally allow you to create your own artistic vision. It's that mixture of stuff that matters because nobody else in the world has gone through those same experiences and has been influenced by the same things and people that you have been influenced by. So I highly, highly recommend that you also work on peeling back those layers and discovering yourself and who you are as a human being what you like, what you don't like, what you're affected by, what you're called to, what moves you, and all of these things as you are developing those cold artistic skills. And once you've arrived at a certain point, don't be afraid to take off those training wheels and make something from scratch for yourself with no one else's help. And continue giving importance to this aspect and working on this as you move on in your artistic journey because as you go through life experiences, you're going to change as a person and your artwork is going to evolve as well. So after having said all that, I'm going to share five specific tips that I apply myself that I feel really have helped me progress towards finding my own artistic style and voice, though I realize that I still have a long way to go. I do feel I have made a lot of progress um, and I'm going to be sharing these with you. My first tip is of course to stay consistent no matter what. It doesn't really matter if you only have 15 to 20 minutes to work on a quick sketch any given day. It doesn't matter but you need to prioritize your artistic growth. You need to honor the fact that you're an artist and you need to create. And you can be confident in the fact that even those small steps are moving you forward. I created a video a while back titled How to Make Time for Your Art. 
which I give you tips that I applied myself when I was still holding my last full-time, very demanding job that had me working overtime in order to progress artistically. Tip number two is to realize that inspiration can come from anything as long as you stay open and receptive. So instead of only looking for inspiration in other artists' illustrations or paintings, turn to music, movies, literature, fashion, or general themes that move you as inspiration. Tip number three is to create an inspiration board. And this you can do on Pinterest, or even if you're not into Pinterest, then you can also do it in physical form with cutouts and other things that you can manually put together. But as I said in the previous point, collect a variety of things that inspire you, whether they are color schemes or textures or photographs, general moods that speak to you, etc. As visual people, stepping back and seeing this collection of different things that call to you is absolutely invaluable. By doing this kind of exercise, you're able to pinpoint visual cues and threads that you would have otherwise never been able to acknowledge. Tip number four is to put yourself through periods of what I like to call incubation, in which you're limiting the consumption of visual stimuli and inspiration that you're taking in, and sifting through all of the different sources of inspiration that have already caused an impact on you in some shape, way, or form. Because as visual people especially, it's very, very easy to be influenced by something that you have right in front of your face right now, but usually the things that actually say something about yourself as a person are the trends that have stuck through in your life throughout the years. So try to discover those trends. All right, so moving on to the fifth and final tip that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today, and this is something that has made a huge impact for me in my own life and getting to know myself, and this is doing some sort of journaling or freeform writing. So I don't remember if I have ever shared anything in regards to my morning routines here on a YouTube video, but for me, my morning routines are absolutely essential for me to have as they help ensure that I'll be able to be as productive and happy as possible throughout my day, to be honest. And so something that I have been incorporating into my morning routines for at least the past year is writing morning pages. And this has been absolutely invaluable to me as it helps me get everything that I have in my head down on paper, do a sort of mental brain dump, and sift through my own thoughts. This allows me to acknowledge everything I have in my overactive head and be able to tackle the day a lot better. But this can also take the form of just journaling in the afternoon or wherever you have free time. And don't worry if you don't like to write, you can completely do it in free form without paying any regard to things like spelling, grammar, or topic, or sequence, or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But what this allows you to do is to listen to your own thoughts and get used to acknowledging them. It allows you to find patterns and just the practice of being able to put what you have in your head down on paper in a tangible form is absolutely invaluable. All right, so I just want to close here by sharing a quote that I read a while back and I feel really goes hand in hand with today's topic of finding your own artistic style and voice. It's by an author called Lukpa Veranova and the quote is, In searching for myself, I have created myself. Hope you enjoy the rest of this time lapse.
All right, everyone, that is it for today. I really, really hope you got something from this video. I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. Let me know if you're just starting out, what has been hardest for you in terms of discovering your own artistic style and voice. And if you're a little bit more advanced and you have already found it or feel like you're getting close to it, share your tips so that we can all help each other out. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. It really helps my channel get in front of more people. Don't forget to subscribe so I can see you next Friday and talk to you soon.